welcome back to another Sunday meal prep video. Super excited that y'all are joining me today. If you are new here, my name is Jennifer. I am 47 years old. I've been doing WW for two and a half years or so now. Lost about 72 pounds and I have really just been maintaining my weight for the past several months. And every Sunday I do these meal preps. I prep uh, for my husband and I for Sunday night through Friday night. So I basically choose two meals each week and then we make six servings of each and alternate those um, each night during the week. And we actually love this meal prep process. It makes our evenings so much easier. And, you know, we swap it up every week. We try two different meals and it never really seems to uh, get boring, at least not to us. And um, if that's something that you're interested in, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. I typically upload three times per week. And also follow me over on Instagram. I will leave my Instagram handle for you here on the screen as well. And then I have a great Facebook group that I co-admin with Roy from Recipes with Roy and Breed with Balancing Life with Bree. And the name of that group is Finding Our Way. And this is the icon to that group. There is a direct link down in the description box if you want to join that group. Highly recommend that you do. Now, with all of the introductions out of the way, for our meals today, we are going to make the um, easy chicken noodle soup recipe that we have made several times before. It is snowing here today in Tennessee, um, so it's a nice week to have some uh, good chicken noodle soup. We will have the corn muffins along with that. And then I'm also going to make some air fryer pork chops, which is a skinny taste recipe. I've made this before. It's been several months since I've made it. It's really good. They come out really crispy. You know, you can spice them up a little bit I think there's paprika and you know salt and pepper and whatnot all in the um, seasoning mix and it's breaded with some panko breadcrumbs and cornflakes I never do the cornflakes I just use the panko breadcrumbs I just leave the cornflakes out uh, and those are delicious cooked in the air fryer along with that we are going to have Brussels sprouts and some of the diced yellow potatoes that are seasoned with the Cajun seasoning. If you don't like Brussels sprouts, you will love this recipe. Trust me, I didn't like them before I started making them like this. Anyway, Charlie's already diced both of those up. All I need to do is season them up. They will go on sheet pans in the oven and roast in the oven. I don't know, for about 45 minutes to an hour or so, and they are delicious and the perfect side to those pork chops. And then for dessert, I still haven't decided. I know I've been having issues picking out desserts and then sometimes I try a new dessert and we don't like it too much and then we're kind of like meh, but um, we'll see what we end up doing for dessert. I will just decide later in the video. And so with all that being said, let's just get right into it. All right, guys, we are ready to get started on the prep for the day. So this is everything that Charlie needs to prep for the chicken noodle soup and the sides to go along with the uh, pork chops that we are going to make. So. Uh, we have the two pineapple as normal, our normal fruits, um, cantaloupe, and then blueberries, which I will just wash those. For the chicken noodle soup, I did go ahead and get the pre-diced um, celery for him because we just did a Publix order and this was the same price as like the smaller like stock that I was going to get. So I was like, I'll just save him some time and get that. And then we just have this little bag of baby carrots that he will dice up into small pieces to go along with that. And then we are going to have Brussels sprouts along with the pork chops. So he will just cut those up. We will season those up really well and cook those in the oven along with some of these potatoes. I just got, I like these gold potatoes and there was like a little small bag that I would have had to buy two bags of and they were like $5 each or something. So I just bought this larger bag that was less than the other bag of these Publix Go potatoes. So we don't need to use all of these. Probably we'll have him measure out, mm, I don't know, two pounds worth maybe, maybe three, we'll see. Hopefully the others don't go to waste, but again, it was still cheaper to get this and we have used these potatoes before, they are good. Uh, so those will be diced up. We will season those up with the Cajun seasoning and those are the two sides, the Brussels sprouts and the potatoes to go along with the air fryer pork chops. And then we have five bell peppers, which I didn't intend on getting five bell peppers, but um, we will use them for sure. So he will just dice all of those up. We will have a nice big bowl of peppers. I'll just use extra whenever I make my scrambled eggs for the week um, because I still have some left from last week. So I definitely need to use those up and you know, there's zero points. It doesn't hurt to add in a little bit extra. And then we have one tiny little tomato here. She doesn't seem very ripe to cut up to go with my sandwiches for the week. And then we'll see how it goes at work because I don't know if y'all can see that out there or not, but we are getting a lot of snow 
and it was raining earlier and kind of looking icy and now it's snowing on top of it so i'm sure tomorrow's going to be a mess so i highly doubt that i will make it into the office tomorrow unless it starts raining or something later today and washes this away but the temperature is supposed to drop from this point on so i think that it rained it was raining when we got up and now it's turned to snow so i think it's going to be a real hot mess in the morning if the temperature continues to drop so it's just now really starting to stick because it was 35 degrees earlier i don't know what it is right now but anywho with all that being said say good morning nico say hi to your friends he said i'm checking everything out all right guys let's roll into charlie's prep you got that something baby that i can go without just like a poison in me you're all that i'm about loving the highs on my the lows it's getting out of my control i want that something baby cause i can go without mama used to tell me love it right if it ain't easy but i'm in too deep to walk away from you papa used to tell me love should never drive you crazy to make up our fruit bowls. I have my pineapple, my cantaloupe, and my blueberries here. I get a lot of questions on how we find good cantaloupe and pineapple this time of year. It is really difficult. Um, last week, it was actually pretty good the week before that. I don't think either one of them had any flavor, but both of these this week seem to taste pretty good, so it is kind of hit or miss. Um, I do find that using the Chobani Nonfat Greek Yogurt to dip it in does help the flavor, so if it's you know a little bland or whatever it does give it a little bit of taste but anyway i'm going to go ahead and make up my fruit bowls we will just make up one and then i'll make up the rest of them off camera i am only making six because i do have one left over from last week one day at work we did order in food and so i had panera one day for lunch instead of my sandwich and fruit so anyway, that's what one bowl looks like, and I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these made up, and then I will show them to you once they are done. All right, here are my completed containers of fruit and yogurt, and then of course my tomato that Charlie sliced for my sandwiches this week, and then I have a really full bowl of diced peppers because I had an extra pepper um, this week, but that is fine. We will just use it and have extra in our scrambled eggs and extra for our pizzas. So going to get all of this put away and we're going to get started on the chicken noodle soup. All right, we are ready to get started on the homemade chicken noodle soup. This is from budgetbites.com. Highly recommend this recipe. We have made it a few times and it is delicious every time. It does take a little while for it to cook, but it is going to cook on the stove top. Uh, I'm going to use this nice big pot right here. This is one that I picked up at Marshalls but it is um, a nice pot and it is the perfect thing to cook this chicken noodle soup in so if you can find something similar to this highly recommend it 
uh, but you need a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, which I am not going to use. I'm going to just use my olive oil spray, and I'm not going to use the onion in it. Y'all know how I am. We are going to use the garlic. So we're going to start off with three teaspoons of garlic. It calls for three garlic cloves. It calls for half a pound of carrots diced up and half a bunch of celery. We really have a pound of carrots and probably a little bit less celery in here, but it is fine. Uh, two split chicken breast bone in. These are two boneless, skinless chicken breasts, which I have just seasoned with salt and pepper. Uh, I will use some chicken broth. It does not call for chicken broth, but just to give it some more of that chicken flavor since this does not have the bone in it. Um, and then for spices or seasonings, whichever you call these, we need one teaspoon of dried basil, one tablespoon of dried parsley, a half a teaspoon of dried thyme, and a whole bay leaf. So I've already mixed up all of that, and I kind of have like a tiny bay leaf and then one that was kind of torn in half, so I'm just going to go ahead and use those some pepper and then we will add two to three teaspoons of salt kind of towards the ends and then it calls for six ounces of egg noodles and instead of egg noodles i am going to use this light rotini from fiber gourmet highly recommend this these do not soak up all of the liquid i accidentally learned a lesson using the penne one time when i did not have the rotini and regretted that decision uh, the soup was still good but it soaked up all of the liquid so um, I need to get my chicken broth out as well and this also calls for I think eight cups of water yeah so it calls for eight cups of water in there and then we will add probably a whole container of chicken broth on top of that as well so let us get it started because this pretty much boils on the stove for like an hour or so and then you add in the noodles and finish it up. Once we kind of get it going, we will make the um, corn muffins and get those in the oven so they can cook and probably get started on the uh, potatoes, Brussels sprouts, and the pork chops as well. And ju this just kind of has to simmer for like an hour. So let me get this going so we can get started on the other stuff. Okay, we are going to get started. Um, the first step says to basically dice the onion and the garlic and cook the onion until it is softened up. We are skipping that step. We are going straight to adding in the garlic and then the carrots and the celery and cooking those until those are softened up. Um, so we are going to use three teaspoons of this minced garlic. There's one, two, three. And again, you can leave that out if you don't like garlic. And I'm going to go ahead and add in my diced uh, celery and carrots. And we will just cook these with the garlic until they are softened up. So these probably need to cook for at least five minutes or so, so we will be back. Okay, so we are back. This has been um, cooking for about five minutes or so. Now we are ready to go ahead and add in the chicken breast, the water. I'm going to add the chicken broth in and then our seasonings and some pepper. Even though I did salt and pepper the chicken breast, we will go ahead and add in a little bit more. So there's our two chicken breasts, and then it says to go ahead and add in the bay leaf, the basil, the thyme, and the parsley. I'm going to sprinkle that in as well. And the eight cups of water, which luckily I have an eight cup uh, measuring cup thing here from Pampered Chef, which I loved. I've had this for years. And you want to bring this to a boil. We are going to go ahead and add in the chicken broth as well. And then we're going to lower it down, and it has to be covered and simmer for at least an hour. I'm going to add just a container of some low sodium chicken broth in here. Okay, so at this point, we're going to bring it to a boil, and then once it's boiling, we will reduce it and put a lid on it, and it has to simmer for an hour from that point, at least, to cook the chicken through. We'll take the chicken out and shred it and put the noodles in at that point, and then just cook the noodles for, I think, seven minutes or so. So let me get this to a boil, and I will be back. I need to add in some pepper as well. And then we do add in some salt kind of at the end. It tells you to do like two to three teaspoons of salt. So we will do that then. So there's my pepper. Now we will be back. Okay, so the chicken soup, it still has not even come to a complete boil yet. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting together these corn muffins. And then we will go back and check on that. Hopefully it will start boiling here in a minute. I'm kind of listening for it because I don't want it to boil over so that I can turn it down. And then I'm going to set an hour timer and let it simmer for an hour. But I've got everything ready to make the corn muffins. They're super easy, super delicious, highly recommend. So I am going to use one cup, no, one and a half cups of the uh, Martha White Hot Rise cornmeal mix. 
and I don't know why I love to use this one for the uh, corn muffins. However, you can just use any self-rising cornmeal will be fine. I will use three tablespoons of egg whites and then I'm going to use 21 ounces of cream style corn. So it's basically one and a half cans. So I've already measured out my one and a half cups of cornmeal mix. I'm going to put that in. And then I am going to use my scale to weigh the corn to get to the 21 ounces. It's pretty much one and a half cans. You don't have to weigh it if you don't want to. But there, that only got 13.9 ounces. There we go, 21 ounces exactly. Boom, there it is, 21 ounces. So, love it whenever it comes out perfect. Usually it's off a little bit, but uh, then we will do three egg whites. Three tablespoons of egg whites. So there's one, two, three. Then we are just going to mix this up and then we are gonna scoop it into 12 muffins. And each muffin is three points. Okay, so I have that mixed well. I have my muffin tin here and I have already sprayed it with the Pam baking spray so that they do not stick. And then I'm just gonna use my ice cream scoop to scoop it into the 12 muffins. are ready to go in the oven 400 degrees for about 15 to 17 minutes last time I accidentally cooked them at 350 and I had to cook them longer so there my oven just preheated so I'm popping them in I'm gonna do them for at least 15 minutes all right guys I did not film uh, mixing up the turkey burgers but it was just one pack of 99% lean ground turkey and then two tablespoons of the Mrs. Dash tomato basil seasoning in there just mix them up divided it into four patties and Charlie actually went out and grilled it outside even though it is snowing but we do have a covered back porch out there um, was it cold out there it was cold yeah he's swapping out my battery on my other camera so i'm gonna let these cool completely and then i will put these in individual little ziploc bags and i just keep them in the freezer and then on saturdays for a quick lunch i love to have one of these um in the la extreme wellness wrap along with my favorite alexia sweet potato fries so highly recommend doing this and then you already have them made up it makes a great lunch anytime it would make a great lunch to go along with my fruit bowls or anything during the week so um again i love to have these uh, and whenever i ate the last one i knew i was out so i just went ahead and added another pack of lean ground turkey to my grocery order this week and even though i'm not eating one today they will be ready for me later this week or next weekend typically saturdays are the days that i have these because i like to have my sweet potato fries as a little treat all right i am ready to start on the brussels sprouts and the little gold potatoes that we are going to to season up pretty heavily and put on these two sheet pans and bake in the oven. I basically will use the same seasonings for both except for on the potatoes I'm going to use olive oil spray. On the Brussels sprouts I'm going to use avocado oil spray. You can use olive oil spray. I just find that the avocado oil spray tastes a little better and then on the potatoes we will season them with the um, Cajun seasoning. I will not use that on the Brussels sprouts but we will use garlic powder, ground cumin, chili powder, garlic salt although I didn't realize I was so low on garlic salt I don't know if I have any more or not I need to check in the cabinet we are going to get these seasoned up oh and of course salt and pepper I forgot salt and pepper so salt and pepper on both of them spray them stir them and then I'm going to basically re-season them all again so we are going to try to do this real quick I will um, do one of them at a time, get it on the sheet pan, set it to the side, and then do the other one. Okay, so I'm going to get started on the potatoes. I'm going to spray them really well with the extra virgin olive oil spray. I'm going to salt and pepper them. And then I'm going to put in some garlic powder, some garlic salt, some chili powder, or some ground cumin, <laughs> and some chili powder. And then, of course, some of the Cajun seasoning. And I'm going to kind of go through it all twice. And I don't really measure these spices or anything. So you can just put however much you want. You know, we like things pretty heavily seasoned. So let's speed through this and get this together. Let's drink up your death. Look like big fun. Come on, let's get it on. Like that orphan gay song. I'm something you love it. Come on, give me something. I know that you want it.
Okay, so the potatoes are ready. I'm just gonna spray the tops one more time with the olive oil spray and set this to the side and we will work on the Brussels sprouts. So basically it's the same thing for the Brussels sprouts except I use the avocado oil spray and I do not use the Cajun seasoning but we are going to season up with all of the other same seasonings. So I have the Brussels sprouts and the potatoes ready to go in the oven. It is already preheated to 400 where I cooked the corn muffins. So we are gonna go ahead and put it in. They will cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes because at 30 minutes I will stir them and swap the rope, the shelf that they are on. One will be on the bottom, one will be in the middle. And so I will swap them at that point and then see if we how much longer we need to go. But it's usually at least 45 minutes to an hour. And I do like to cook the Brussels sprouts until they are nice and charred, kind of black on the edges and stuff. They are delicious. Trust me, you will like them even if you don't think you will. All right, guys, here are the corn muffins fresh out of the oven, looking delicious. These are the perfect side to go with taco soup, chicken noodle soup, my chicken noodle soup over here just to check on it is just boiling away. It says it only has about 20 minutes left. I set an hour timer on it, but it seemed like the boil wasn't really rolling as much as what it should have been. So I may let it boil just a little bit longer just to make sure that the chicken is cooked through. So uh, we will be back once it is time to take out the chicken, put in the rotini, stuff like that. And then that will kind of wrap up this full meal. Uh, we have the potatoes and the Brussels sprouts going in the oven and now we are getting ready to get started on the air fryer pork chops which Charlie is going to help me with. We're just preheating the air fryer here for about five minutes and I'm going to get all my stuff together for that. So basically it'll just be seasoning it up, breading it, and we just have to rotate through and cook them and flip them. So that's where Charlie is going to help on that part. Well, and then for dessert, let me flip you around. For dessert, I have decided I was going to make one of the pumpkin cheesecakes because we love that recipe and it's been a long time since we've done that. So once we kind of get the pork chops going and Charlie can go through the rotation of those, then I'm going to go ahead and mix together the cheesecake because it takes like 30 to 45 minutes to bake. I can't remember how long exactly. While that's going, I will just go ahead and make my bacon and eggs. I usually don't film that just because it's kind of a hot mess and I'm just scrambling a bunch of eggs and putting bacon in the microwave. So um, we'll be close to wrapping this up before we know it. All right, we are getting ready to start on the crispy breaded pork chops. So we are gonna cook them in the air fryer. I'm using my Ninja Foodie here, which serves as an air fryer, a slow cooker, or even a uh, instant pot as well. Um, so what I have here are my pork chops. I have just seasoned both sides with the kosher salt, as she said to do. She says to use one egg, but I feel like that's not enough. Eggs are zero points for me, so we do have two eggs here ready to go. And then in our breadcrumb mixture, we have half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. I just use these original ones from Publix. And then she also calls for a third of a cup of crushed corn flakes. I'm not going to use those. We do have two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese in there. I just used this Kroger Parmesan cheese. It actually used all of it up. Uh, then we have a fourth of a teaspoon of paprika in here. We have half a teaspoon of onion powder in there. We have a fourth of a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more, of chili powder in there. And then we have half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then we also have an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper in there. So all of that is mixed up together. Obviously, we are just going to dip in the egg, dip in the breadcrumbs. They are going to cook at 400 degrees for 12 minutes. It says turning halfway, spritzing both sides with oil. So 
Uh, we probably will be only be able to put about three of them in there. We actually have eight. So each of us will get, what, one and a third pork chops for our serving is the way that we will do it. So anyway, we are going to cook them in batches. I'm going to get the first one going, and then Charlie is going to kind of pick up and finish up the rest of it while I work on the cheesecake. And we did preheat this. It just cut off. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just spray the inside of my air fryer with olive oil spray, which that one is out. And you know I have another. Make sure I spray it good, and then I'm gonna keep that there because we are gonna spray the tops of them once we get them in. So we are going to just dip into the egg mixture and then into the breadcrumbs on both sides. And then we're just going to place it in there. Charlie is standing over here watching. After I get this batch going, he is picking up and doing the rest. So you just want to make sure, oh, you can't see me, you just want to make sure that they are coated pretty evenly. Do you think I can fit one more? Yeah. So we'll have to cook three batches. We can do two on the last batch since we have eight pork chops here. There we go. So we put three of them in there. You don't want them overlapping or anything. And we are just going to turn this on the air fryer. We're gonna do 400 degrees for 12 minutes and we will flip them halfway. So there we go. It is ready to go. So now I'm gonna let Charlie take over and then we will show you once they are done. I'm gonna have Alexa set a timer as well. Alexa set a six minute timer. She ain't listening again. Alexa, set a six minute timer, please. Six minutes, starting now. Thank you. All right, so that's Charlie's uh, timer so that he knows to flip them, but he's gonna go ahead and get the rest of these uh, breaded up and ready to go. All right, we are over here at the chicken noodle soup. It is done. I just pulled out the two chicken breasts, if you can see those. And we are gonna go ahead and put in the rotini noodles, bring it back up to a boil and cook these for seven minutes and then we're going to shred the chicken while this is going and then put the chicken back in there and we need to add some salt at this point i forgot about the salt so it says to add two to three teaspoons of salt so that's what we're going to do so we're just going with one two three and we'll do just a little bit extra I'll give that a stir and then we're going to add in our rotini noodles and cook it for seven minutes and then put the chicken back in and I order these, you can either order them straight from Fiber Gourmet or you can order them from Amazon. And these are two points per serving. So I'm just gonna set a little timer here for seven minutes and shred up my chicken. And I always just use the two forks to shred the chicken because it's usually so tender. But if you have issues with that, you can always get out a little hand blender, mixer, whatever it's called, and shred it. Okay, that is shredded up good. So now we will just wait and put it back in once the noodles are finished. Okay, we are back. The noodles have just finished boiling for the seven minutes. What I like about these is they don't really puff up and take up any room. I don't know if you can see that little noodle that I have pushed up there, probably not but they don't absorb all the liquid. We are gonna add back in the shredded chicken now, and we're just gonna let it simmer for a couple more minutes, and it should be done. I might give it a little taste test, and I need to get the bay leaf out. I forgot to pull that out. There are two little bay leaves in there. You don't wanna eat the bay leaf, so always take it out. But yeah, this is looking and smelling good. Highly recommend this recipe. Again, it is from budgetbites.com. It will be linked down below along with the link to my WW app, but I think this only comes out to about two points per serving, so it is perfect to pair with the corn muffins, and they are three points each on the blue plan and on my personal points plan. Again, as I always say, calculate your own points, especially since everybody's points are different now, but in just another minute, we'll plate this up. Okay, guys, so we are moving right along. The soup is still a little warm. As you can see, the steam coming off of it, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it plated up. Charlie is still working on the pork chops. If you hear the air fryer and stuff in the background, that's what that is. And I just pulled the potatoes and the Brussels sprouts out of the oven, so look at that. Y'all, that is some delicious soup. Charlie tasted it, and he swears it tastes just like the Mama Mandela's chicken soup that we can get at Carrabba's. So, it is really good. This one is quite tasty. This will probably be what we have for dinner tonight, I would say. 
It's a nice snowy night. Perfect for some homemade chicken noodle soup. And honestly, now that I've been making this, I don't think I could ever go back to eating canned soup. Do you, Charlie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, in a pinch, you know, some Campbell's chicken noodle soup would do, but <laughs> I tried some of that Progresso soup one day. Ugh, it was awful. Alrighty, here are the completed bowls of chicken noodle soup. Again, we will pair this with the corn muffins for our meal, but this is looking, smelling, and tasting delicious. Charlie and I both had a little taste test, and it is perfect. So, we are going to move right along now and make the uh, cheesecake and get it in the oven because it takes a little while to bake. Alright guys, I'm getting ready to make this uh, Weight Watchers pumpkin cheesecake. This is one smart point on one of the old plans. Anyway, I think it still calculates out to one on my plan. It takes three eggs, which I already have three eggs in here ready to go. Three cups of non-fat Greek yogurt, which I have measured out, which is the Chobani that I always use. You can use Faye, any brand that you want. It doesn't matter. One box of the Jell-O Instant um, Sugar-Free. You can use either vanilla or cheesecake. I do have the cheesecake um, flavoring here. It calls for half a tablespoon of caramel extract. I don't have that, so I'm just going to use vanilla. Three-fourths of a cup of canned pumpkin. So I have that measured out here ready to go And then we are going to use a teaspoon of Pumpkin pie spice and a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and then it calls for three tablespoons of stevia I don't like stevia. I'm just going to put the monk fruit sweetener in it and cook it for hmm, Let's see here 350 degrees For 30 minutes you have to let it cool for 15 to 20 minutes then we will just wrap it in plastic and chill it in the refrigerator overnight so we won't be able to eat this today this will be something we can have the rest of the week but we've tried this recipe two or three times and it is good we both like it so it's pretty easy basically we mix everything together and we are going to put it in this pie pan and just spray it with the pan baking spray and my oven is already preheated so let's get it done real quick and the last of the pork chops are still cooking if you hear the uh, air fryer in the background I apologize so we're going to go ahead and put in, we have our three eggs in, we're going to add in the pumpkin and we're going to add in our three cups of yogurt. Oh wait, no we do that later. Eggs, canned pumpkin, caramel extract, which we have the vanilla extract, so we need half a tablespoon, which this is half a tablespoon. So do half a tablespoon of the vanilla extract. And then we are going to go in with the cinnamon. We need a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice and a teaspoon of cinnamon. So there is a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. And then it says the three tablespoons of stevia, which instead of stevia, I'm going to use this monk fruit sweetener. And this is half a tablespoon, so I'm going to do six of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is three tablespoons. Then we're gonna mix this together well. Okay, so that's mixed well. Now we are gonna mix in the um, dry pudding mix and the yogurt. And then we'll be ready to put it in the pan. So I'm gonna put the whole packet of sugar-free cheesecake pudding mix in here and three cups of non-fat Greek yogurt. And we're gonna mix this together well and it'll be ready to put in our pie dish. Okay, so I have this pie dish here. We have it mixed well. We're just gonna spray this good. Okay, she is ready to go in the oven, 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Alrighty guys, here are the pork chops out of the air fryer. We will each get a whole pork chop and then a third of one. So Charlie went ahead and cut two of them up into thirds. They are looking delicious and crispy. He did cook these longer than what the um, recipe recommended because normally we get the little thin uh, pork loin chops, but they did not have those at Publix, so they substituted these and we got to looking at them. They were thicker. So I think he cooked these for 16 minutes, so eight minutes each side and they look perfect and then we have the cajun seasoned diced potatoes here and then of course we have the um, brussels sprouts to go along with that as well so what we are going to do is measure out um, one and a half pork chops into each container four ounces of potatoes and then just divide the brussels sprouts evenly I'm gonna let Charlie work on that. I am working on making my scrambled eggs. So we will just do a little speed clip of him putting this together.
Next here are the completed air fried pork chops along with the Cajun seasoned diced potatoes and the Brussels sprouts. I have four ounces of potatoes in each of mine and then Charlie just put the excess in his because there was a little bit left over after he put four ounces in each one. But this is looking delicious. We each got one and a third pork chops and this is going to be a nice feeling hearty meal. And um, thanks to Charlie for plating it up for me. He's helping me today because... He's helping me today because we slept in so late and we did not get started. I did not get started cooking until after 3 o'clock. And it's almost 7 p.m. now. We're almost done. But, um, again, that's one reason that he's been helping so much today. Just so that we could get it together. So, super late start, super late finish. But, we're almost there. Alright, we have finally completed today's meal prep. Over here, we have our fruit and yogurt containers for the week. I do have a, one left from last week in the refrigerator, so I do have seven all together. These are the six that I prepared today. Here is our homemade chicken noodle soup and the corn muffins that we will have with it. And then, of course, we have the panko breaded pork chops that were cooked in the air fryer along with the Cajun seasoned diced potatoes and the seasoned Brussels sprouts. This is a delicious meal. Both of these are delicious meals. I highly recommend both of them. You cannot go wrong with them and they are very filling as well. And then I went ahead and prepped my breakfast for five days. I have five things of eggs and then 10 strips of bacon over there. And then there is our pumpkin cheesecake. And of course it just needs to sit and cool. We will wrap it in plastic and stick it in the refrigerator and not eat that one until tomorrow. But overall, super happy with all of this, and I think I have completed another successful meal prep. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me for another Sunday meal prep. I hope that you get some good ideas from this video. I hope that you try some of these meals, and I hope that you meal prep and try to set yourself up for success. It is the way that I have kind of been successful on this program and been maintaining my weight loss for the past couple of years. And Charlie likes it too, even though he doesn't do Weight Watchers, but he still gets to enjoy nice hearty portions of food that is also healthy for him as well. So again, thank you all to my Jennifer's Gems that make it all the way to the end. I love each and every one of y'all and I will see you guys in the next video. Mwah. Oh, and if you haven't yet subscribed, click that subscribe button down below and like this video. It helps your girl out. Love y'all.